Do you like to play? Yeah. <laughs> yeah? I do you want to play? Hi, I'm Lou and this is Lily Rose. Can you say hello? Hello. <laughs> um, uh, thanks for tuning in. Um, we're just making this really impromptu, impromptu <laughs> video as we're out and about. We're at one of our local haunts that we often go visit and explore the woods. Um, but because it's Easter holiday, they have got a special Easter trail on. And it's just made me think, because it's very busy today, there's lots of families out and about, which is of course a groovy thing to see lots of people out and about. But I've just been observing families out in nature and it's just, it's very, it's very interesting to watch. Um, and it's made me think about play and the opportunities children get to play and in particular the invitation to play. So um, this trail that we're on today, is um you know it's very structured and you know there's a map and you go find the numbers and at each of the numbers there's like a little activity to do um which you know they're nice activities but um i guess you know they are directed activities i'm not saying there's anything wrong with directed activities but um what i've noticed is that in some family groups the activities have become that invite to play uh, so, for example, one of the activities in the den building kind of area is to build a nest. And of course, there's lots of people there building nests and following the activity. Uh, um, but then, because, you know, you're in the woods, there was all sorts of other things happening. Some of the children were playing hide and seek. Some of them were playing with the dens. And there was like fairy houses and stuff going on. <laughs> Sorry about that, Lily Rowe just grabbed the camera and then we surprised a dog walker by being hidden in a shelter. <laughs> but um, I think I was saying that, yeah, yeah, it, some, some families, some children, there was the invite to play and they were off and away in the woods. So what started as a, you know, a structured activity ended up being, a, I guess, a way of getting people out in the space and then different things emerged. However, from what I observed, that wasn't the case for everybody. So not, not everybody were using these Easter activities as an invite to play. And from what I could observe, the main difference was how the adults were. So there were some families that were very much focused on the actual activity so you know using the building the bird nest example they were in the woods and the child maybe has found sticks and started tapping trees or you know making music with the sticks and instead of kind of allowing that to happen or even perhaps valuing that as an activity in itself the adults that were with them redirected them and, and brought them back to kind of come and bring those sticks back make the nest with them let me up oh what have you found oh chestnut yes go my must eat it yeah i think you're right probably a squirrel has eaten can you see any tooth marks so squirrel treasure interlude um but yeah, yeah, the main difference I could notice was how the adults were with the children. So as I say, some were kind of redirecting them back to the proper activity, as it were. Uh, other things that I noticed that were kind of not conducive to the play was, I guess, time limited. So, um, you know, the children were starting to engage with the environment, starting to play, and the adult was like, oh, come on, let's go to find the next one. Let's go find number 10. Um, so it was almost as if the adult Yuck. saw them. You got it again. More squirrel treasure. Um, it was almost I'm as if the child the wasn't, if they weren't doing the, the structured proper activity, oh, then obviously the what they were doing wasn't valued and it was time to move on to the next structured activity. Um, and of course they were getting through things much more quickly, uh, whereas other families were spending lots more time out here. Anyway, it just made me think about Forest School and how Forest School is about finding that happy balance between structure and freedom. 
and the process evolves over time once you get to know the space once you get to know the group and the individuals and their preferences and how they like to play but that idea that activities you know more structured activities can be an invite to play particularly if you've got learners who perhaps have been play deprived perhaps they've never been allowed to make choices for themselves and they might need something to get them going so they might need the idea of building a giant bird's nest or um, planting some seeds or doing an egg and spoon race <laughs> <laughs> or looking at the birds, um, uh, you know, the bird wings, all of these things were things that we've done today, but, but as a way of like starting the process. But of course at Forest School, what we're looking to, we're only using those st structured activities as a way of bridging the gap. <laughs> so once the children start initiating play themselves and start engaging like you know jumping off of logs and things like that then we but you know that's great we don't need to use those structured activities anymore because the children are able to make their own choices and uh, intrinsically motivate themselves and then all we need to do is kind of observe and keep up really <laughs> <laughs> and maybe dynamically risk assess as well. <laughs> the idea around invitations to play also very much fits in with affordances theory, which if you've not come across that, that's worth kind of checking out. You may have come across it in your forest school training. Um, I can't actually remember the guy right now who kind of came up with a theory, but he was like an architect. He wrote an article. <laughs> But it's the idea that the environment um, offers opportunities or like invites certain things to happen. And the affordances theory is used in all sorts of things like, you know, designing uh, landscapes, uh, outdoor architecture, that sort of thing. Um, but it's also very relevant in the play world, particularly with those people who perhaps design playgrounds um, and spaces, uh, recreational spaces. Um, but yeah, the idea is that certain things lend themselves to certain behaviours and certain play behaviours. So for example, we walked in the woods, we found this den, which you know has certain affordances like coming inside and exploring, finding the log, balancing on the log, jumping off of it. Um, there's, you know, adding further sticks to it. Uh, it's like it's, there's an invitation there um, to interact with it in some way. Um, so again, that can be really useful to know about as a forest school leader, because you could look through your eyes of looking for affordances, looking for invitations as you look at your site. You know, has your site got a slope? What sort of affordances does a slope offer? You know, running down it, rolling down it, maybe when it's wet, sliding down it, mud slides, uh, you know, rivers, dams, that sort of thing. Um, so you could use the idea of affordances to look at like the play potential of your environment um, and perhaps also how you set up the space as well to make it more um, more invitational <laughs> for children's play uh, cool so yeah there you go invitations to play just a few thoughts off the top of my head <laughs> <laughs> do you have any other groovy ideas around invitations to play or affordances do let me know in the comment section below if you've enjoyed this video do give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel so you can join us in the woods again next time and thanks for watching bye -bye. <laughs> you're gonna look at the camera and say bye-bye bye-bye structured activities can be a useful tool as a starting point, they can be cool. <laughs> a bridge to play is what we need. Consider them an invitation when you head to the trees. <laughs>